Okay, good news guys. So we're beginning. I'm pretty impressed. January the 1st is a day which is usually a write-off and you guys made it to class. Oh, we were biting so hard last night. <laughs> yeah, so I heard the, the, like in a way it's good news, but it, no news is good news these days. So news is generally not so great, um, unless you're able to see between the lines. The news last night was there was missiles here instead of fireworks, and apparently you guys weren't allowed to go out. We were you know. Okay, so I, I did hope that you guys would have more regular schedule, and it you know as time has gone on, but obviously this war has really affected your year here. But Kala Kavod, you know, you stuck it out, you're here. And we are, together have done some important sessions. I hope everyone got the, the last week's easy to remember message. Listen good, get it good. Yeah, you, you remember a little bit? Listen good, yeah, get it good. I've listened to so many women since last week. Good, and did it help? So much. Is that, that? You got them all? No, you get it good. Yes. Impressed with the January 1st turnout. This is, this is getting better and better. It's funny, he's wearing a top with gift on it. Our friend there. I'm actually going to London next week, I just mentioned before. So if anyone has anyone who wants to meet me there or you introduce me to anyone or any programs, I'm planning on meeting Naftali Shift, who's the head of GIFT. He's the head of all those organizations. So he's the big boss man. I'm, we haven't met each other for like for a bunch of years for whatever reason. So it's just funny you're wearing that top because he's like the boss man. So it's good that it's good preparation for next week's story. So that's why I won't be with you guys for the intimacy day. But this Shabbat, I heard you guys are coming to my town. So I'm, ha I'm open to three or four guys to come for the meal. I'm hesitating to invite everyone over afterwards after your meal to my house. Because I know what it's going to do to my wife. Because she's going to be like, oh, I need to like provide. Like, and she'll like go crazy. And Because right now she's... We're dedicating this class not only to my son, but also to my wife. Because it's getting really heavy. My son is in Khan Yunus. You know Khan Yunus? It's not like a party over there. It's not a New Year's festival like people hope last night in Tel Aviv. Instead, it's, it's a booby-trapped terrorist nightmare. And he's joined up with Div Divan and us some other units, and it's, it's heavy, heavy stuff, what's going on. So we have extra in mind, my son, Baruch Yitzhak Ben Masha, but also my wife, Masha Baschaya, because a mother needs, you know, strength to cope with having a son knowing he's in such a crazy place. Yes? Where you lose your son again? San Chanim. We won't say the number or, or the detail. I mean, it's changed now because they've, they've um, joined up a few different units to, to do this next mission is very heavy heavy mission um but the amazing blessing was last shabbos he uh, he wasn't here the shabbos before i think i came did i come to you guys already after that show i think i did and he really brought a lot of light to our home and to our family and to the community and so we're very grateful we had that shabbat together with him but just please extra prayers are needed this is an intense time we've, this war hasn't finished we're like we're really doing the next stage. And so too in our classes, we're getting to one of the most difficult parts of everything we've discussed. Yeah, remember we went through being proactive and having a mission statement, getting into priorities. This is all about intimacy, remember. And that's all on a personal level, private level. We jumped ahead into the public level, even though I was gonna wait till round now, because we've only got a certain amount of classes together and I didn't want us to miss the public level of win-win. That means you guys building the people around you, building the relationship around you on a win focus. It's going to help you in business as well to be win-win mindset. The you win, the partner wins, the business colleague wins, the client wins, everyone wins. That's the, that's the goal. The next is, we said already again, what, what's the saying? Come on, get it, listen good. Get it, yeah. good. get it good. So by listening, that's really how you're going to get it good. And now we're going to go into this one. This one is a tough one. Synergization. I don't know if you ever heard of this word. Anyone knows what synergization is? What is synergization? And synergy. Anyone knows what synergy is? Like working together. Good man, yeah. 
the man from all the way down in the south there, where it's summer, it's summer right now. He's, he, his family having a nice summer holiday. Yeah, is that right? Um, so, my, basically my dog's quite old. Yeah. So my parents don't want to like take him to the kennel where they usually do. Uh, so they home for home for the summer. But, but it's still uh, hot there, no? It's nice. Yeah, yeah it's very hot. Like summertime, because some of my family went to Africa, went to Cape Town, on my wife's yeah, side. Yeah, it's beautiful. So uh, yeah, it's funny how the world is so different. You know, like people are in summer, people are hours ahead, hours behind. No, I think this is the first year for New Year's where I've like been. Yeah, think about America. Like cold. they're only a few hours after just like going nuts at midnight. Yeah. And we're sitting here having a class. We just heard missiles are flying in Tel Aviv last night. You know, like that was what was going on in central Israel. What were you saying? Yeah. Um, no, it's the second year I've been in somewhere cold because I was in Austria the one time. Uh, like, Austria. Usually I'm on holiday now. You know? Yeah, it's usually it's holiday time for us African dudes. Anyway, guys, let's focus for, for like however much time we got. Yeah, because I'm not, my time's precious, your time's precious. I don't want to waste your time. So we've done through six very important. Well, five important principles, habits, ways of being in this world that will give you a, a good in, a intimate connection with a lady, with your soulmate, with, please God, with your business colleagues, in a, obviously not intimate, but in a successful way, and um, please God, you know, with the community and everything else you're going to do in life. The sixth one is really where it's at, because synergization, like our friend here says, working together. Synergy means joining together, but... Let me ask you, when I say one plus one, what do you say? Equals two, yeah? But synergization actually makes it equals 10, equals 50, equals 100. Because what happens when you join with someone, there's a called, it's compound interest. Have you heard of this concept? Yeah. Compound, you want to invest, you guys, come on, money guys here, yeah? yeah. You want to make some money, you've got to have compound. Compound investments. Constantly growing, growing, but not just... Exponential growth. Yeah, and it's not just like simple maths. Why are you leaving, man? We're just starting. Come back. Yeah. Usually I don't call anyone out, but this time I really want you guys to sit this one out. Yeah. So the idea of synergization is compound interest. We want to make some bucks, yeah, in this world. And the way we're going to make bucks is by joining together. You can't do everything yourself. I've had some very, very wealthy friends. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. And they're still it's my the friends. Kanye West, the yeah. Jews share their truth on how to make a dog. Exactly. There we go. He, 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 he's one of the reasons why he's having such an issue of us. Bottom line is because he's jealous of our ability to work together. And my, my wealthiest of friends, they tried at certain points to be a one man band, like to run all their businesses, like very much they're the center of it. And slowly, slowly they learn over time to. What's the word? To de 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 designate, yeah? Delegate. delegate, thank you. To delegate others, give management at different parts of their business to other people and tr develop them and train them and trust them that they could run that part of their business so then they can start living, yeah? And now they're at that point, thank God, and they're in a good place and they should be blessed. I'm going to be seeing them when I go back to London next week. I'm very excited to see them. One of them, he asked me to get a pair to fill in. I'm actually going to pick it up this week for his father get to do those kind of Jewish mitzvahs for these guys. But there's also uh, just the bottom line, the connection I have with these people. It's another example of synergy. Because we, by being friends, by having a crew like you do here, you become much bigger than you would be if you're just by yourself. It's very important really, because sometimes you think, I can do this myself. Like even as a family, sometimes I feel like we're very unique. If you come to Frat, you'll see, you know, you're gonna come Shabbos night. I'm gonna be wearing a furry hat. There's no one like me, yeah? Do you wear a furry hat? Oh yeah, you'll see. It's strong. So no, no one like me in, in a frat. And my family are unique. We've gone on a unique journey. I've had a unique like, experience of life. I was just saying about Rolling Stones, you know. I, like, family grew up, you know, going to Rolling Stone concerts and all that kind of thing. You know, that was like, and then here I am like, you know, with spirituality, you know, it's a swell and a whole different flow and the music people I work with are more spiritually focused. It's like it's been a journey, a unique journey. And everyone has their own unique journey. And you start to think, you know, I'll just do this myself. It's all right. I'm, I, I can take, I'm independent. I don't need anyone. But the real key is, and this is the real public victory which we all need to have, and this is going to be the same with finding your soulmate, with your finding that woman that you join with, is you cannot be independent as a couple. You're interdependent. You are joined together. You're synergized. You're, you're needing each other on a certain level in a healthy way, not in a like, 
you know, codependent way, where you're, you're overly dependent. We're talking about here where you're in a balanced way, you've sorted your inner self out, so now publicly you're joining up with this other person, and you know where you stand, they know where they stand, and you join together. Obviously this takes time in relationships, it takes a long time sometimes, like you're going to have to work out the boundaries and the communication, and like we said about listening good is going to be a key part of this, really understanding what the other person's needs are, etc. But the point is, the more interdependent you are, not independent, interdependent, you get the difference. It's, it's a higher level than independence. You definitely don't want to be dependent. Being dependent on people is not where it's at. Don't want to do that. You get that, yeah? Ultimately, you're going to have to be independent from your parents, from this program, from your own negative drives or whatever. You're going to have to be independent at some point. Yeah? Brother, independence, yeah? Independent day. But now we're taking it to the next level, interdependence. What's interdependence? Joining up with others and still maintaining your independence. This is really important. So right now, it comes out, perfect timing, we have a nation. Who's the nation this week's Pasha? Who knows? Right. Yeah? No, we don't want to be Mitzrayim. We're sure. an Israel. Us. Yeah? Children of Israel. We are a nation now. In this week's Pasha, there's a lot of Puravu going on. You get what I'm saying? Like six children coming out each time. Oh, yeah. yeah? That's busy. You know, imagine you, 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 six children each time you're with your wife. Yeah? In, the, in a crazy place like Mitzrayim was. And we became a nation, a massive nation. The Mitzrayim was worried about us, so they wanted to start subjugating us worse and worse, to the point where we came out, we had to like go through this whole separation process of being dependent on the Mitzrayim and their watermelons and their McDonald's and all the other crap they tried to poison us with. We had to become independent from their culture and become our own people. And that was a very difficult separation process. That's what's going to be about all these next six weeks and how we become our own people with our own mission, our own light unto the nation, our own dwelling place eventually. Seven, eight weeks from now, we're going to be Truma to Sabah, we're going to be in the Mishkan. And then the goal is to bring us to Purim. That's where, that's where it all comes together. Purim, yeah, not just because we're making a, having a good booze up, having a drink, but also because there's sort of like in the schedule of how our journey goes through this next time period and also in this program, it's sort of like the climax of this winter, yeah? Here we get an extra month. You should know that. You get an extra month this year. It's a leap year. So you get an extra month to get ready for Purim. But the point is, what I'm trying to say is we're becoming a nation. We're becoming a people. Right now that's happening, like live, live stream it from, from Gaza, from Lebanon, from the border up there. We're becoming a nation. We're having to clarify more and more what we're about and what we're not. That's what's happening like right now in the war. Like, we are not these people that want to kill, butcher, murder, rape, and all this negative stuff. We are people that are maintaining our independence and our security. And we're getting more and more clear about that as a nation. We can't be confused. Because if we're confused, what's going to happen? What are, the, are they confused? Are our enemies confused? What, what's their story? I'm asking a question, guys. They're a little bit confused, but they're pretty clear they want to kill us. Like, it's not like... Yeah, like, but they confused in their approach. Maybe, but the bottom line is they know, they call the war the, the like, they're very clear that it's about the temple spot, they call, that's what they call it, they're very clear that it's about fundamentals, they know what their mission is, so we have to make sure in order to win a war you have to know what your mission is, what your nation is about, we can't be arguing amongst ourselves, there has to be that interdependence, that unity, that synergization, so we need this concept more than ever, yeah? What would you consider as a win? Victory. So that's a very good question. I'm actually doing a podcast. I don't know if any of you guys heard of Just One Chesed. They're doing a lot for, uh, for the soldiers. They've raised like $6 million worth of equipment. That's like heavy, heavy equipment, like proper bulletproof vests, bulletproof helmets, like the real deal. Thousands of duffel bags have been given out to the soldiers. You can go to their command center in a frat. It's a real thing, and Beit Shemesh as well. They're, it's a real organization, Just One Chesed. And I'm doing a podcast with one of the main guys there called Yosef Aaron. And it, we are discussing kindness, chesed, doing good things. So one of the things that came up this week, we're going to talk about nisachon, victory. So what is victory? That's a good, what, what would you guys say? Let me throw it back to you. Come on, everyone here. 
Everyone say some one thing you would say victory. You, brother at the back, yeah? You, you go, you, you're strong about this. What's victory, man? What's Nisachon? Nisachon is Yeah. Odd part? We build the Disneyland in Gaza. Okay, Disneyland in Gaza. Yeah? Madeira, a new apartment for the Gosford family on the beach. Okay, I like that one. Next. Now, I think Sinwa, head on a stick. Head on a stick. I'm, I'm all up. I'm, so far, you're on the right path. What else? <laughs> no, victory, brother. So Sleeping dude, what's a victory? You be the one to cut what's victory in this war? In this war? What would you say? Remember, there's also up north as well. We've got to think about that. When you're on an assurance that, like, like um, establishing a proper deterrence for the surrounding countries. Yeah. By the way, tell the guy who went to the toilet that's a really long toilet break. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, I saw a funny picture today, funny enough. So you, your answer was good. I saw a funny picture that someone was sitting on the, it was like, you know, the old school phone booths and the new school phone booth. What's the old school? What's, what's 20 years ago the phone, phone booth? The phone booth. What's the new school phone booth? Father. Toilet. <laughs> yeah, you're sitting there like, that's where it all goes, all the action. So what are you saying again? Repeat it again one more time. Yeah, just establishing a strong enough deterrent that actually yeah. works. Yeah, that's it. So work, what, what would you say works? Go on in, at the back, dude. Things, Brother at the back, good. one minute before you. Let him have a go. Uh, things don't go to the way it was, back to the way it was before the war. They can't go back the way it was. Or they should. No, that, 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 the victory is, it, it doesn't. It doesn't. So it can't go back to before October the 7th. Like, there's a diss now that people are saying, I don't know if this is true or not, but my daughter was telling me in Israel, they, they call people who are not like getting the point of what's just happened the October 6th Jews. You know, they're, they're the October 6th guys. Anyone who's in October 6th is missing the point. Yeah, it's a new world, it's different. Go on, and what are you going to say? First thing you were saying about the toilet, I saw a thing, it was like, yeah. men spend on average like three hours or four hours a week or something and they <laughs> have to get like their own personal time. Exactly. Um, what do women do in the toilet? Cry? Yeah. <laughs> Recover from the husband? In groups, they don't go. Yeah, there. regroup, they, they regroup. Yeah. Okay, dude in the corner, well, what are you saying? Men, What's victory? Quiet or round? You like your peace? Yeah, yeah okay, I get that. That's I, cool. Yeshiva Das, peace of mind. Peace of mind. I'd say victory is like the global community sort of seeing, like for it to be generally accepted that like Hamas is the enemy and like they're responsible for everything and like stop blaming. So it's dependent a little bit on world, world opinion, that's what you're saying? I just think with world opinion, it's a lot easier to do things, you know, like, I think... But what if the, some of the world has lost the plot and there's no changing? Like, like the woke, yeah, so, like, the whole woke I mean, thing. I'm like, fine. they're 5% and yet they're holding, as Ben Shapiro says, 95% of America capture. Yeah, in terms like, of the culture, in terms of Disney and everything else. They're controlling from 5% of the people, everything that you see on media. You go to a movie and it's like this whole woke script. Suddenly there has to be... Um, every kind of you know human being there with every kind of gender, even though there's only two, and every kind of this, and like and it's, they've caught the whole culture war. They've like caught captured it. Yeah. So what are you going to do with that? So that in that space, what do we do? So what's realistic victory for us is that we have to be victorious amongst our people, amongst this community here that we live in in the Middle East. Like we're still on good terms with UAE. Saudi Arabia, etc. Or do we have to be globally, again, respected as a nation? Is that, is that a goal? Is that victory? Okay, these are great, great points. And brother, with the hand on his face, what are you saying? I just don't want to say names in case anyone's listening in. Huh? Victory, what would you say victory is? It definitely, you need to be a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. Look, he's already by victory because he's so chilled. He's like, yeah, we already won, didn't we? No, we didn't yet. We're not winning yet. Sorry, I wish we were. If we were won, if we won, my son would be home. I'd have to, or at least on an army base or something. Yeah, we don't really want our 
loved ones in this place where they're at. It's dangerous. Every day is a miracle that they're... What are your, what are your thoughts on Manchester? Manchester United? What? City Manchester. Pretty dreary. I mean, I've been there loads yeah. of times. It rains a lot. It's murmurs from Manchester. I heard the weather's really not good up north right now. It's snowing. Manchester's... Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to London... <laughs> Funny enough, I thought like I was had it good. Apparently, the weather's pretty good in London. But my dad just told me the car park where he picks me up just got on fire, and it caught a few cars on fire. It was a massive fire, and I won't be able to go to that car park. I've got to figure out how to get to some other car park. I'm like, what? This is like, you know, you think by. I said, why don't I have sorted it out a week from now? He said, no, they won't. It was such a bad fire. Some of the cars are still there. Luton. No, but the fire was months ago. Yeah, it was months ago. He's saying it's still a problem. I don't know. Yeah, Do you think he's making it up? Okay, so look, let's, let's, let's say something good about our people. That would never happen in Israel. Yeah, there'd be so much. Do you know what happened to me? I was, it was on Pesach. I was in Tel Aviv and like we went, you know, like we sing like the Song of the Sea or whatever. Sure. So I was there. We bought the... It's bar like Suruk, you know, like on the Tayelet there. Nice. It's like one of the hotels. I love a that. That beach is, line is amazing. A yeah. car set on fire. Like no way. Set on fire. There was so much smoke. It was wow. crazy. Um, was it a hot day? It was a hot day. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was the middle of the night. In your, on your but it was hot though. It was, it was Pesach. So like I wasn't crazy hot. Okay. Um, car just set on fire. Can happen, man. Crazy, like the fire department came and stuff. Like, yeah. I don't know if it was a terror attack. I don't you know don't know, you don't know. Look, the point is that what I'm saying is that if we can get through this next time period with victory, if you guys, before you leave this Eric to Soul, imagine that we will have a big party. That was something to look forward What's to. Your you know? view on victory? Oh, my, my opinion? No, You're right, I haven't actually said my opinion yet. Your I've just been listening. What, I wanted, what, what's yours first? Because you didn't say it. Sinwa on the stick. Yeah, I like yeah. that. You did say that. You're right. You did say. What about uh, one of the dudes at the back there? Uh, probably when we don't have to kill people to protect our civilians. No, no. So we need to kill people. We need to kill them because they're going to grow up and do terrorists. This keeps on happening. In okay. Dude in the hat. What do you say, man? Dude in the hat. What do you say? You got to you got to bring that Shabbos, by the way. That would be cool. Bring that hat, Shabbat. It make me feel more comfortable. Khan, what, what are you saying? What's the victory of this war? How's this? I think victory is when we, are, can, we can end conscription in Israel. No, it's when you, when Iran is, the government is in Iran. Like compulsory army service. All right. Not, He's getting to the root. The root. That's the but that's not even the root. Because Iran is backed by China and Russia. It's not the root at all. There's, I think there's no victory at all. I don't think, I think there's a victory. Like, victory is when the US Russia, the yeah, victory is when people destroy Hamas. At the end of the day, there's no more victory until Mashiach comes. It's the okay, so I, I, the guy, the, the, I have to say he's, he's got to the, with all everyone's contribution, because it sort of led to your answer, that, and that answer is, I agree with 100% with him. And but that is still a victory to destroy Hamas. We have to. But it's not the main victory. This is a really important point. This is going to be a game changer in your life. One guy called Gedalia Fence in America is a very successful person. His understanding of victory is you make a cheesecake party. You know what that is? Every time you accomplish something, you have to celebrate. Don't miss the point of celebration. That's why celebration is so important. Why, what did you do? We, 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 we have a, a, a nation want to destroy us. What do we do? We fast, we pray, we fight. And what happens? We win. What do we do? We eat. We drink. No. Party. party. Yeah, he got the word. Party. We party. That's Amisa. We eat. We have to celebrate. Jews are the professional eaters. We're like the best. Yeah, we know how to eat better than anyone. And the understanding of eating is also very deep because it brings people together. That's why I said Purim is the climax of this whole time. Because after we've done all the work that we're going to do, please God, the next eight weeks or so, we're going to make a big meal together, Purim, and celebrate. And my hope it will be celebrating the destruction of Hamas, just like Haman and his sons were destroyed. We have to give a little like goal. Like, because the problem is what happens is you're like, we'll never defeat these guys. And, uh, and it's like, uh, and everything's so depressing. That, you can't win a war with that kind of headspace. You've got to say, look, let's give ourselves a two-month timeline and let's take care of these dudes. Yeah? All the way into the south, 
all the way up north, and let's just take care of them. The Chachila Ribba. Let's just go straight into there and take out all these dudes. So there's the whole, a certain... The the once there's that clear vision and clarity of what we need to do, then we just go about doing it, and then we celebrate afterwards. Did we destroy, like our brother said, the whole evil acts of Russia and China and you know, all these sort of terrorist, gangster reality of humanity right now that seems to be in everyone's face? Yeah? Or the woke world and all these like, negative realities of humanity. Are we going to just change that or destroy it? Probably not by tomorrow or probably not by Purim. But as he said, only Mashiach probably can accomplish that. But what we do know is we celebrate steps. We have to. You have to consolidate. There has to be at some... I don't know if the government would do this, but at least we'll do it. As a, as a nation, we have to celebrate at some point. We have to. It's, it will give us the strength to keep going ahead. We have to keep celebrating weddings. We have to keep celebrating Burisim. We have to keep celebrating the accomplishments that you guys do at B'nai Akiva. That brings togetherness. That is when you see everyone synergize. Because then you're like together. You're having a meal. You're celebrating. It's so important. So... I'm not saying last night was necessarily a good time to celebrate. It probably insensitive based on the fact it's not a religious holiday or anything, for us at least. But the importance of celebration is always needed. That's why Shabbat every week is in a way a mini celebration of your life. That we, what you did that week, you celebrate accomplishment, you internalize. What did I do this week? The six days of the week. It's the sixth habit. What did I accomplish this six days? You're now bringing everything together. What did I do these six days of the week? What did I accomplish? Now, I'll tell you something, this is important, intimacy. With a, a couple, what would you say one of the most important habits you need to have in your relationship? Well, what would you say is the most important habit? What would you say, you're going to please God, you're going to find a nice lady, yeah? What would you say is one of the most important things to fix in your schedule? You've got all your business meetings set up, Time. you've got your learning schedule, you want to keep growing as a, as a thinking person, you don't want to just become a zombie. Time. And what is how? Can, what, what do we call that officially? Like, what's the name? When you're when you're meeting up with a girl, would you call it date date, date night? You need a date night, date time, whatever it is. Once a week, yeah. Once a week, we get together. We go out for this. Last week it was we went to Shalai and We we jumped on and we had to go to Bris, but we didn't stay for the whole time, even though there was fat food there and there was loads of nice. They had like it was a very wealthy people Bris. They had like a fresh coffee bar, bar, baristas standing there, making like coffee with fresh, fresh, grounded coffee. And you could ask for any kind of coffee. I saw like these Mesh Arim guys, you know, like with the beers and the pears, and they were like walking around with this giant coffee, like with twirls and it looked really funny. <laughs> Just the contrast, yeah? Because yeah. they're not getting that from the mikveh, you know, getting lucky, get a chapami with a little like coffee inside. And they got all these giant cuts of all the twirls and it was a funny image. But anyway, the point was that we were after that, she, my wife being the righteous lady that she is, she didn't eat anything there. She waited to go out and we went to Aroma and we sat together, just the two of us, and connected. That was our uh, date time. Got an sponsor, yes. Nice. And wherever it is, you have to give that quality time. That needs to be like the golden rule in your schedule that you're going to have date time, prioritize her, and it, that's when you bond. And that, that will be also with intimacy as well. You're going to have to create a situation where the phones are off and the kids are out of sight by that point when you have children or whoever it is, the, if you're dorming, the, the, the rest of the guys aren't around. Like, this is your space together. This is your time. You create a setting. You create an ambience. It, to get to intimacy, it's not just like get what you want and buy. That kind of thing is like, it's cheap, yeah? It comes, it goes, but it's not, it's not lasting. What... what makes it deep is that you've worked, you developed, you built it up, and it becomes a very powerful experience that way. And that's the idea of synergizing, because what happens when a husband and wife synergize becomes a family. Yeah? It li literally has compound interest. It becomes, and you're going to be spending a lot of compound interest as well, but the point is that it builds a family. This is, what, this is the truth about synergization, joining together with other people. So when you get this concept down, you're living a different life. And that's what, I'm, this is what we need to do as a, as a nation as well. We need to have very clear, like a, a time to celebrate, to join together. We're a people, we've gone through a hard time. We can't just constantly fight. There's going to have to be moments of celebration. All the time, endlessly fighting is not going to be 
not going to work. Like what they did to my son's unit, 75 days of endless fighting, that was crazy. Do you think that was wrong about me? Huh? I don't know, but that's what they did. 75 days of endless being in the Gazan buildings and eating and like from the fruits and from all the different scenarios that were going on in Gaza. He told us stories. You know, it's crazy the, the, what he found inside the rooms of the Gazan people. They like, a lot of them, he, almost he said every house has a Hamas uniform. Every house has Hamas paraphernalia, has, you know, like all the kids are being trained to be like Hamas nicks, like they have the guns and the, yeah, all the good. children books, they have anti-Semitic writings, he saw some in English, like he said, and weird, another weird thing, I don't know if I said this last time, but they have a lot of sex, uh, what do you call it, like products, like how do you toys. call it, sex toys in their cupboards, and they, you know, they dressed all like sneers on the outside, in their cupboards they have sex toys, you know, you don't know that, I wouldn't have known that, mm -hmm. yeah, so you, you're thinking, I know this is my son saying he saw this with his own eyes. He didn't make this up, yeah? And the point is that, you know, you have to understand who we're dealing with when she starts to go into their world. And we have to be clear what we are. They, they're, they're clear what they are. And that synergization, that joining together gives us much more power to win this war. And that in itself is a victory. You ask me what victory is, I would say also victory is that we're together. Victory is not just that, that we're more together as a nation. Let's be realistic. We're not going to become like, you know, like uh, the, the Brady Bunch. You know, we're not going to be holding hands like some, you know, kumbaya. Yeah, Jews are always got... Everyone's going to have their own opinion. But nevertheless, we, we're together. We, as a people, we know that we have to have an equal mission with this kind of scenario. And that's very special. That's, that wasn't like that before October the 7th. Like, there's nothing... Um, like you're saying like it should, it will be victory, but it's like sort of already happened, don't you think? Well, the unity aspect. Yeah, like, so oh, yeah, it then. definitely has happened, but it has to happen in a way that it lasts. That it, it becomes like, a certain clear reality of what we're about. We're not going to now say, but yeah, but, uh, but maybe we do need to like, you know, allow Hamas to have their own. I imagine there's some people maybe still think that, yeah? Surely the boss, I mean, Israelis, I think, are more extreme in their approach of like, they like Gaza should be flattened. Completely. Yeah, which car is, park, yeah. Which is like Disney, not, like our friend said. Yeah, yeah, which I don't think is wrong, uh -huh. it's correct. Like, I, I think a lot of Israelis are like very... It's as bad as Hamas. We have that issue. They want to go wipe them out. Like, uh, yeah, to wipe out every civilian that bad as... So yeah. there has to be some sort of. I don't think that's that's the. I don't think that's the. I don't think that's one. I'm just letting you know. I'm just letting you know firsthand the way the armies run. They are not allowed to do that. They're not allowed to do that. Because you shouldn't. It's wrong. No, but they're not allowed. There's a moral. There's a moral, humane rule. And even when you have, I'm saying this firsthand. Even when you have soldiers who have that inclination like you're saying that they want to do that they are not being allowed to do it and even if and to the point where even if a, a captain if our kid knows that certain soldiers in their unit has that inclination they will never leave them alone with a palestinian or a gazan or a hamas they will never leave them alone because they know that that person once left alone probably will do that yeah. And therefore, they have them under control as a soldier, as an army, as a, as a nation. We have a mission. And so even if individually there are people thinking that way, they're not going to be able to act it out because the overall path of the Israeli army is a, hopefully a moral, humane path. Unlike Hamas, who they're actually told to do all the non-moral, all the inhumane, that's actually their mission. And if they don't do it, there's something wrong with them. If they have a moment of compassion on an Israeli or, or a, a Thailandi or whoever they've captured, that's a weakness. That will demote them. That will cause them maybe even to become an enemy to Hamas. You have to understand Hamas is as cruel to its own people as it is to everyone else. That's why the son of Hamas, that guy Musab, is, he's going around so strongly taking it on because he understands in a very personal way that as hard as Israelis were on him when he was in prison, is no way as bad as what Hamas do, yeah? It's like a different level of cruelty. So you have to understand it became very clear. So we have to have that clear vision of Am Yisrael, a nation, that synergy. So let's bring it back to the relationship. You found this lady, yeah? 
she's you're the one. You just get this feeling. She's deep. She's connected to you. She understands you. You understand her. You love her. She's hot. Whatever it is that makes it work for you. Yeah. Now, one of the things that's going to give it, we said you, you've got that moment of unity. You, you, you know, you're connecting. But to have it longevity, you have to have same values. Like I went with my wife to a parent meeting the other day. And every single teacher almost said this. It was really inspiring for us as a couple. They said, I'm really happy to meet you guys because you're on the same page. Duff Achad, you're on the same page. That's what they all kept saying. It was, it's a, few, a few different teachers said it. I was like, wow, that's really compliment. And that, made, that makes their job much easier as, as teachers to communicate to both of us because they see we're united as a couple in our path. Now, there was one thing that we differed. Do you want me to tell you what it is? You're interested? What do we differ? I don't like, like Xbox, PlayStation, all that stuff in my house, yeah? Because it just, everyone gets addicted and then time waste. I hate time wasting. Yeah, even like Netflix is like on the edge there because it's very time consuming. I hate time wasting. It's not even a religious thing. Just bottom line, functional family, getting up on time for what you need to do. Once you spend all those hours at night on a game, you're not going to be functional. So I hate all that stuff. It takes away your time. So I've been adamant, till now, my youngest child is 12, we've never had, but I know, we've never had any computers games in our house other than like Game Boys, and that's not going to really make you addicted, it's, it's garbage compared to where we're at now with FIFA and all this stuff, yeah? So I was sitting in this, school, in this parent meeting, and on this point we disagreed, yeah? We disagreed on this point. So what, what, what did I, what, what happened? My wife suddenly surprised me from left field and says, what, do you, what does the teacher think about getting a, X, a PlayStation and FIFA, a Sony PlayStation and FIFA? Because my son's like really wanting it. He's been going on about it this whole year since his bar mitzvah. And uh, he's going to be birthday another week or two when I get back from England. Get the kid a PlayStation, sure. That's what the teacher said. The teacher said, you've got to get him one. I, I said, I noticed unusually as a yeshiva. He said, we're not yeshiva, we're Beit Seva. I said, oh, that's cool. He said, so bait safer, as a bait safer, we don't have all those like religious reasons that we don't let the kids have this stuff. So we have a PlayStation, a few of them, and when kids are behaving themselves and doing good, we let them play on it, and they, they, they earn the right to play on the PlayStation. And he said, your son is really like on the PlayStation, like he wants to play and it's his thing. And I said, well, if we got him one, probably wouldn't be so extreme about it. He'd be more relaxed because he knows he has one at home. He doesn't have to like, this is his only PlayStation time or if he's a friend or something. So anyway, my wife said, so we should get him one. I was like, what? I thought we were on the same page. So that's when I had to now synergize. How do I synergize? I had to listen now to the teacher, explain to me why he thinks it's good my son gets one. And I had to listen to my wife why she's suddenly coming out from left field, even though I always thought she agreed with me that they shouldn't have one. She's now telling me she thinks they should in front of this teacher, and I'm two on one. And I could be a stubborn dude. I am pretty stubborn generally. But on this point, I was like, no, this is my time now to cede victory to the wife, to the son, to the teacher, and to give it and say, you know what, let's get one. And that's it. So hopefully this will be getting one. But the point is, this is the first time in 22, three years of marriage, and my, as I said, my youngest is 12, we'll, we'll have one of those machines in our house. And it's not a religious reason. It's a, it's a practical time use reason. And I had to let go. Now, what did my son say? He said, so you're going to use it? I said, Vardai, I'm going to be playing on it for sure. I love FIFA. I used to play it all the time. Yeah, go on, what? I find the best method is to not go to parents as a yeah. unity to ask for things if I want something. Oh, like, sure, yeah, you divide and like, conquer. If yeah. I'm talking about the army, I won't talk to my mom. Divide and conquer, yeah. So, like, my dad's more keen for me to so I'll talk to him. I'll, yeah, I'll, you have I'll, to figure I'll, out who the, which voice in the home. If I want money. Kids do money. that. Yeah. Kids do that. My daughter, my oldest daughter is amazing at finding the point of division in our marriage and, like, figuring out how to use that for whatever her thing is. And I'm aware of it and I'll be like, like Matt, call her out. No, this is not the time. Yeah, go on. What are you saying, brother? Is it, is it PS4? Sorry, is it PlayStation or Xbox? Place, uh, Sony PlayStation, I think. Yeah. Oh, you get PlayStation. Xbox is what you're supposed to I don't Sony know. Literally, you're asking someone who hasn't Sony bought one for like eight billion dollars. Yeah. Why? Because there was an issue with the, the taking back 
all the games that people bought online because they bought the property to play, about the license to play, about the property everyone's complaining. And then they, there was an issue with their sale that they were increasing. For, anyway, there's a whole thing. So Sony's being sued. So Sony's, yeah. Sony's paying people that got PlayStation 5s like 500 pounds wow. to reimburse them. So there's like millions of people that are like, getting their money back from their PS. Yeah, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's so, bank, bro. Sony's actually made a really bad mistake. They also lost Call of Duty. Uh, they lost Call of Duty. Uh, Microsoft, I used Microsoft, to love that Microsoft game. Microsoft bought Activision, so Call of Duty. Uh, Activision I used to love that game. Any Xbox exclusives? Uh, and Sony is at the moment that they're doing all right, but they're going downwards. And there's a theory that they're going broke in the next six years. No. Whereas Xbox is about to unleash not only the next generation of consoles, but the next like franchise. Because they're with Activision, they're also anyway. They have a whole bunch of really good deals. Activision that's is out. with the Xbox now. Yeah. So Sony, yeah. Sony, Sony asked to join to join Microsoft. Yeah. Yeah. Microsoft said, sure get from. <laughs> All right, so let. You know, I went home and I was like, Let me okay. So this is the next point. Of, I know I'm happy we've gone to this direction because the next point of discussion is before we carry on with the computer point. I just want to say something that technology is globalization, is synergization, potentially in the right way, not the way it's become so divisive. I don't know how we ended up in this place where everyone's killing each other online, because if you go to the gaming world. I don't know firsthand, but based on what I've seen, there's a lot of like focused energy together on, on, on these games, on accomplishment and joining groups and people from the world playing together. It's, it's, created, it's bridged worlds, cultures. Potentially, you have to understand, the technology, the, the initial intention, say, of Mark Zuckerberg or any of these geniuses was to bring unity, to bring communication, to bring uh, community to create an online community. That was their original intention. And maybe it was also for him to get laid as well, but you know, that's another point. Yeah, but, the, but that was just also synergization, but you know, with a lady. But the point is that definitely there is an ability for, for human society to, through technology done right to synergize, to work together. Does everyone agree with that? Like if it's done right, obviously we've seen it where it's gone wrong. We yeah, with all these like, Hey, brother, well, he's never usually asleep. Give him, give him a nod. Yeah. Dan, we, we, let's have a question. We get a question, then we get something from you. What would you say, ask something about technology. Do you think technology is helpful for intimacy? Like, we're, like if we're going to have robot sex dolls and things like that, yeah? Like, are oh, you going to, are you, if you can get as much pleasure as much as you want, without having to do anything for it we, and just get pure dopamine. You don't have to have any responsibility and it's just as hot, or maybe more hot and it, long lasting hot in the, in the physical sense. Why would humanity want to carry on with marriage and relationships the way it is or the way it should be? I'm kidding, guys. Um, it's because like, obviously like, it feels good, but really uh, there's going to be some point in your life where you you need the companionship, not like there's a simple point where like you know, into like your sex, you just want someone to be there for you. Excellent. So companionship, I'm very happy with his response. Companionship is a huge point. And I believe that's very connected to the soul level. And my whole thing, maybe you asked me, my mission statement is soul. So you're not gonna get that soul connection. There's no much you can bang a machine, yeah, literally. You could plug all these things, create all this chemical stimulation, and they've figured out how to do this and create virtual realities or augmented realities. Um, by the way, I've got a new phrase. Let me ask you. What's artificial intelligence? What is it? It's a neural network that learns from inputs to formulate uh, uh, an output software algorithm. Good response. But why is it called artificial? Why isn't it called something else? Why is it artificial? Because real intelligence is love. It's coming from where? From human humanity. Not you. All you animals. In, in also. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah, we're a form of that. But the point is, I came up with a new idea. I'm going to try this with you dudes. Have you ever heard of this concept called being authentic? People misuse it big time. I came up with a new terminology. Authentic intelligence. It's a new form of AI. Hasn't been talked about yet. I just came up with it a week ago. Authentic intelligence is that we're going to have to, once we've got this whole artificial intelligence revolution and it's taken over everything, we're going to have to come up with some sort of authentic intelligence that's real, that's coming from humans, that's going to balance out this whole artificial revolution. 
so too with augmented reality, we're going to get back to reality. Yeah? With virtual reality, you have to now tune back into reality. There will be constant balancing effects. Humankind will not want to live on a totally virtual, augmented, artificial realm. We're going to constantly need and thirst, like our friend said here, companionship. Real experience, real life, real moments, real emotional experiences. We all need that. And that's why, once again, synergization is so important. Because synergization is that point of meeting between a woman and man, that point of meeting between two people where you connect. Now, what technology figured out is if they want everyone to be so obsessed with it, so into your phone and everything else, what they figured out was, and they're manipulating us in that way, what they figured out is that we all want connection. So we, we imagine we're getting a connection through our phones by having all these followers and likes and, and, and all this dopamine and from having you know, all these images and images or have you call them, all these different like, things, these memes and everything going on online, all these memes, whatever you call them. I get all these words wrong. The point is, we imagine that this is going to be the... Thank you for you. This is going to fulfill that connection point. But once again, we thank God we have a time called Shabbat. We disconnect to reconnect. We have a time where we can just turn off all that potential in, in, uh, intelligence of technology and we just turn it off for a minute and we can actually be with that person. And we suddenly realize this is the real deal. Nothing gave me that kind of intense human experience like being with my wife or like being with my child or like being with my parents in a like where they're not bothering you with actually in a relaxed state and you can actually have a normal conversation with them. Yeah. Nothing gave me that kind of connection. I'm going, one of the reasons I'm going back to London, the bottom line is just to see my parents. That's the real bottom line. At the end, after all the podcasts and people I'm going to go see and all the old friends, deep down it really is my parents are getting old and I want to spend some time with them. It's a deep need. You, know, you, you all have it, yeah? Your parents live in London. They live in London. And it's a deep need. And the point is that moment of connection, that point of connection, that's where it's at. And that's where technology, as far as they're developing, they can never replace that. All they should really be doing is just enhance it. If it's done right, technology's done right, it should just enhance your relationships. It should make you less needing to go plow the land and make food and do all this annoying hand labor stuff. So then when you're with the people you love, you can be totally present and focused. That's really all technology should be doing. Not distracting you from your, those relationships, enhancing those relationships. And that's, that's our hope. Like, long term because we're not just having a war right now with Hamas we're having a war with our own telephones our own phones we're having a war with ourselves on an internal level how to become a, a good healthy balanced human being in a, in a technological age and that's a massive you know discussion point on every single mainstream podcast everyone's talking about it how we can become like healthy focused happy human beings that is, it used to be like more easy to come to. Now we have to work for it. We have to make decisions. We can't just expect we're going to be that way just by just sort of floating through life. It's not going to happen. Because you're going to have to make decisions in a second. Do I take the phone now? Do I message that person? Do I post that post? Do I, do I become a voice myself of truth and reason online? Is it going to be worth it? Is it going to make a difference in my sphere of influence? I encourage it, I do. I do think you shouldn't underestimate your power of your own voice in your sphere online. I do think there's, there's, there's times for it. But the key is to keep it to those times. It should not, I struggle with this, it should not spill over into everything. It has to be focused time with the family. I fail on this day after day, but then thank God my wife's still there, my kids are still there, they still talk to me, so there's a chance for me to fix it. Yeah. And you're going to have to do this with your girl. Like I told you, I told you the story of one of my boys back in LA. He said he's ruining this potential girl that he's with because he's all the time, she's saying, on the phone. He's a guy in LA, he's got social networking, he's a, he's a great artist online, and he's got a following, and he's got a manager, and la, 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 la. He's got all the excuses. At the end of the day, if he's not there when she needs him, he's going to lose her in some way or form, or lose her completely. And that's going to be the... It's going to be the the make or break of your relationships. Can you synergize? Can you unify with this person? And do you have an equal value system? If she's obsessed with being an Instagram model or something, so she might be hot for that initial experience, 
but it's going to be very annoying seeing her DMs day after day, yeah, what's going on over there when she's meant to be your lady, yeah? The ideal is a girl with like 100 Instagram followers, no posts, you know, like... Yeah. Ideal. Yeah. Like it's still hot. It's still hot, yeah. Yeah. They gotta be pretty. I mean, I, I, one of my friends, he had a really pretty, like, not normal pretty girl, and he, thank God he's married and had a child and everything, but she had quite a big following, and then together they they must have talked it out and she blocked a lot of people she unfollowed a lot of people and i watched it went all the way down to like a very small group of people that had access to instagram but isn't it kind of double standard if you have kissed a lot of people and you have a, a huge following yeah to expect someone like to expect your, you know, your girlfriend to have well it depends what that following is for if you're like an influencer and it's bringing you business but what so i get it but if she's just having fun and socializing and it's leading to things that take away from the relationship, meaning she's more con conscious of that post she's going to do. You just took her out to a beautiful Dubai hotel, seven star hotel. And it's all about now all the pictures, all the moments she's taking. And you're like trying to talk to her and she's just like busy looking at the DMs. Yeah. About all the, the dopamines coming from everyone's reactions to her post of the breakfast she had like that. Not what you want to, you want to be, you're taking her there and she's not there. She's on her phone, she's in phone world. So it sort of loses the connection. That's an opportunity for your relationship to blossom because you're in a beautiful location together and she's somewhere else or he's somewhere. So the whole key is to not allow that to happen. Take a few key moments and the rest, leave the phone alone and focus on the person. That's, that's what will bring joy, that will bring fulfilling moments together, that will build the relationship. Because all those conversations, all those moments would be shared. You know, my, my daughter always says, or my, when she sees old school concerts, you ever watched old school concerts like Live Aid, which my family put on? You ever watched like Freddie Mercury do Bohemian Rhapsody or any of those Sammy, moments? Sammy would do anything to meet Freddie Mercury. Okay, so say, say someone like that. So those concerts, were people present? Were, pe were people present? What were they doing? Were they on the phone? Were they videoing live feeds? I do this as well. We all got the same problem. Or were they just totally immersed in the experience of the concert? Okay, so now what? If they have phones, they would be recording the entire So how do we? So how do we? How do we with the phone still experience life? That's going to be the challenge. And then you can watch it again whenever you want to. It's an amazing piece of technology because it means you're able to. Okay, he's seeing the good in it. Ever rewatches those videos? Of course I do. You do. You do? Every single picture I review, I take on my phone. I'll look Pictures are different, but like, but like, so, I remember, like, I remember, like, there was this. That's keeping alive that moment with you. Okay, so yeah, that's. Yeah, I think that's amazing. That's a positive thing. I, I give you an example. Of what he's saying, good, because it is always good way of using everything. My, uh, my one of my old students from back in the day, messaged me and said, "Do you have any old pics and videos of when we were in yeshiva together? Like you were the rabbi and I was yeshiva," and I was like. It was 19, it was 2008, nine. I wasn't really posting then. I probably had it on a camera and printed it out, but I don't have access right now. And I started looking online. I found very few, but I found a bunch. And those bunch, even compared to how much there is now with content, but I found a decent enough that made a bunch of people very happy to see like them in 2008, nine. Now, what was even better was I found loads of old videos of my family that I haven't looked at for ages. And we all had a bonding session just looking at old videos of us when we were like, they were all little kids and they were so cute. We had a whole bonding session. Everyone enjoyed watching it, except for my son in Azza because he's not able to watch it. But um, everyone else, we were bonding. It was beautiful. Even my son, who's not really into phones, was happy to see some old footage of him doing whatever. So you're right. Those moments, that is one of the beautiful things of technology that if it captures a special moment, and that you can relive it together. That is using technology once again to enhance your relationships. Yeah, go Isn't on. It crazy, like now you find a photo of like your great grandmother and it's like one little like black and white thing. Sure. Your grandkids or great grandkids are gonna like see pictures of you in a bikini when you were 20 years old. Like, I did not wear a bikini, but yes. I'm saying in general, like yeah. everyone, like it's like- My wife maybe, not, but that was younger. It's not gonna be younger. like a mystery now with yeah. your great grandparents, but like you, you can know the whole life story. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's funny. Cause that's one of the things Facebook did. Cause you didn't have this transition that I had. When I came on Facebook, I'd already lived 20 something, you know, 28 years of my life or whatever. Cause I came on late. So I came on and now it tells you what was your birthday, birth. 
And it's like, now catch me up. You know, that was part. Whereas you, when you went on Facebook, that was, you know, you were already born. You were born, or whatever it was, Instagram or whatever it was. And you were building a profile like you were already born with this. Like it was already in existence. Yeah. So like I had to like fill in 20 something years, which I didn't waste my time doing. Maybe once or twice I uploaded something from the old days and dated it, but probably not. Some people do it. I don't know. But generally there's like a whole time, space of time, like which is missing. And you know what? Those times were the best. Honestly, I have to admit, I'm pre-internet. Great times. Like going away with the boys and no one posting, no one pictures, nothing. Maybe a photo, one photo just to remember the moment, just one significant moment. But there was no like caring what anyone sees it and how it looks. Like it's and not like that doesn't happen anymore. It still happens? Yeah. You go out and no one's on their phone, everyone's just bonding. Yeah. Great. So there is hope. <laughs> no, like it, I think with girls it's more pronounced like how like they have to like post every time they go out where they go yeah. with, like, I think with boys it's not the same and like, like so I there's hope look if we're able to still connect to people in a real way with technology and it even enhances it like our dude at the back said it can enhance that connection then we've, we've done we've accomplished something big because now technology we're not slaves to it it's working for us and if technology is working for us, that's authentic intelligence. That's coming. That's bringing it to an authentic place where it's 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 going to enable us to, to live happy, fulfilled lives. And not, most importantly, as a husband wife, you will see the benefits that technology is bringing you, rather than it becoming a distraction or an enemy to the relationship. And that is amazing. I hope that will be the reality for all of you. I really do. And I hope that you will see in in your program the energy, the synergization you had as a group, how it helped you become more enhanced people, and understand you couldn't get to that synergization if you hadn't done all the previous work. You can't really unify with, until you have first know who you are, you have that self-awareness, all the things we said before, the previous classes. You can't really join with others until you've done the previous work. And that's why it's so accumulative, everything we're taught, learning together, each thing is a step towards a better, better life, better relationship, and please go to better intimacy life in the right time with the right girl, in the right way, and send me your wedding invitations. That's what a rabbi once said to me a long time ago, and I did send him. I gave him one, and he came and we danced. Oh, yeah. You're more than welcome to come to my wedding if you bring alcohol. Alcohol? So Friday night, anyone who wants to pop round, speak to your lad. Yeah? He, he's organizing. It seems. If you pop round, I'm not so near where the main crew is. Everyone's welcome.